Where will we go? What will NGC do for you? I give you 10 building blocks. The first thematic area is good governance and social sector development. That's one thing. The second thing is economic growth and competitiveness. The third one, social justice and human security. Let me take the first, the first four building blocks. The new Sierra Leone must, must have good governance. It must have good governance. It must invest in social development, must. Why good governance? My brothers and sisters, if the leadership is not right, you remain backward. I told you some of the theories earlier. If the leadership is not visionary, committed to the common people, and put salon force, we will remain behind. So this is why for us, thematic area one is good governance. We will fight corruption. We have to fight corruption. We estimate in NGC that 60 million to 100 million is lost in this country just because people literally steal it. You give them money to build a school, they chop half. You give them money to bring clean water, they steal it. But you know our society celebrates those people. They build the big houses, they have the best jeeps, and yes, we dance behind them. So what do they do? They go back and steal. We celebrate those people, not the professors or the thinkers, not the engineers or the doctors, but the guy who steals the most and builds four houses overnight. We say this is a bill. If, if we don't fix that, if we don't fight that corruption, we can't move forward. So number one, we have to fight it. How? We, the leadership, must be ready to, be, to have integrity. It starts from the top. You set the tone. Yes, regularly we declare our assets. I agree with what the citizen manifesto says. Regularly, we, we show you what we have. So, Kande Nkela, before you came in, maybe you had so much. Great. We know there will be capital gains. We expect that in five years you'll have so much. So, if I have five times that amount, will ask me, oh, and we have to do it for everybody. But what do we see today? A kleptocracy. A handful of people own almost everything in this country. Let me tell you, the last day of parliament, 7th of December 2017, while you were sleeping in McKinney, they were approving bills in your parliament. They approved some companies that you've never heard of. You've never heard of people here. Two of those companies are giving your minerals to a set of people in this country. Tell me, in, since colonial days, did any Sierra Leonean's father own a mine in this country? Did any Sierra Leonean own bauxite? Well, very soon some will. But that belongs to you. It belongs to you. They formed companies already quickly. Why? Because they are used to doing it for 10 years and nobody asks them corruption. A handful of people, grab us, who don't know, their company it belongs to them. You can challenge that. But it is complicity because the parliament approved it. So you see how bad corruption is. It's not one man. It's a group. But it is also the governance structure that approves corruption. The constitution says to seem a trisim no for be parliamentarian. It's for the minister. Not, not also the constitution says. Eh? To seem three seem for seem. Not for be parliamentarian. Not also. But we just found out now, this week, last week, that it is the law. Those who were appointing them, who know the law better than you and me, they said they are fine. Corruption is also when you use the constitution the wrong way to go after people. That's corruption. That's corruption. So, so the new Sierra Leone, the new Sierra Leone that you and I, the new Sierra Leone 
that you and I will create the new Sierra Leone that you and I will create will have no reserve domains for the corrupt we will plug the holes we will plug the holes where people easily steal the money that was meant for the schools and the hospitals to put the toilets in the schools to pay the nurses will plug that hole point number two we will invest in all a social sector accelerator program healthcare will invest big ebola taught us something that we were told that the healthcare system in Sierra Leone is great, that it is free medical because they built it well. Ebola came, it wiped it out. It showed the fragility, the fragility of that sector. We have to invest heavily in healthcare. Our dream in NGC is to build at least one first class hospital in every region. We take, we take people, we take people to Ghana to test. I have to take somebody there soon to Ghana to test. We could do it here. In fact, there was a time I discussed that with President and by Kuruma because next to me in the UN was the Atomic Energy Agency. They can train countries and help them build capacity to do cancer tests, initial stages. So I know we can do it here. I will not build mighty party offices for you to see. I'll build hospitals. Number three, education. Education. No nation, no nation will advance without good education. I assure you, the NGC, the future we want to build, the moment we take over, we will declare an education emergency. Education emergency. Why is it an emergency? The system is broken. We have sexually transmitted grades. We have people graduating from secondary school that cannot write an essay. We have people graduating, they can't work in factories. We have people graduating in disciplines. Nobody will hire them. We will change that. We will review the curricula. The curricula has to fit the job market. We want change. We'll bring change. We want change. And we'll bring it. We'll bring it. It is not fair. It is not fair that our children have and their parents have to look for 500,000 just to get an application form. We'll, we'll abolish it. And I hope, Father, I hope, Father, in Unimac, that Unimac already has online registration I hope we make it online it is possible so we abolish those payments of unnecessary fees we will invest in vocational technical education we need the Votex system we need better plumbers better electricians and others who can work well in the artisanal sector and on factories we will depoliticize education there is too much political interference in education. So our faculty cannot focus enough on academic excellence. You have a long list of PhDs, honorary PhDs I have received around the world. It is because the foundation was built in Serion. It is because Jala University and CKC, FSSG and others gave me a good grounding teaching they value roads where they can steal money so that is education you will see more details but those are the highlights thank you very much we're still on governance and social sector the theme one right so I'll rush now and go to the next but those are all ideas we build together yeah and we will establish special programs for the disabled, the women, but particularly a special fund for youth entrepreneurship. 
The government cannot create jobs for everybody. It is not possible. Let nobody fool you. Not all of you can be civil servants. But we need to give you the tools in schools and universities so you can start your own businesses. So a special focus, special programs on entrepreneurship and uh, young, uh, small and medium enterprises. So that is for governance. I touched on corruption, accountability. I touched on uh, um, health. I touched on education. Yeah, and I explained a little bit. So I said that theme is governance and social sector. The next one, the next category is economic growth and competitiveness. Everything I have said cannot be done if your economy is not growing. Your economy has to grow. The African Union, when they were looking at their vision 2050, 2060, their recommendation is that if African countries want to advance, they have to grow at about 7% or so under NEPAD. We need to grow fast. But the growth has to be real. When they were bluffing that we were growing at 21%, those of us who are good economists knew that that was just for that year. That's why. Suddenly you export a lot of iron ore this year, boom, you start advertising that you are the fastest growing economy. You are building sand capsules in the air. It's going to crash. It's going to crash. So to anchor our economy, we need economic diversification. We have seen the danger of depending on iron ore alone. When iron ore prices crashed, till now we're in the bottom, right? So we have to diversify. Agribusiness, investing in our farmers, but all the supply chain up to marketing. We got to do that. Tourism, but also the digital economy. I want you to be like the Kenyans and the Ghanaians. Now they're investing in IT systems. Their children are making software for American companies. That's brain power. The good news, one of our Sierra Leoneans who graduated last year from MIT, David Sengen, is one of the lead researchers in Kenya. I met him at MIT when I went to the lecture. I was so proud that one of the top students in engineering was a Sierra Leonean, David Sengen. He is now helping Kenya. I say to myself, great, he's learning a lot with IBM now leading in Kenya. When I win, I bring a man like that to so say, David, tell IBM to come here so that our Sierra Leoneans will create the new technologies for them. That's investing in the digital economy. We also have to invest in what we call the creative industries. One of the good things that President Kaba did was to encourage our local artists it's really great to go to parties in Europe and America and for five hours the only thing they play is Sierra Leonean music. Any genre, reggae, uh, calypso, R&B and of course our own typical music here. But our artists are in all of those genres. So yes, we have to invest in the creative industries. A good policy on the music industry but helping them now go digital. We got to do it. Yes. So our own, our one and only, Cow Dinero, famous, Emerson and others, they can even go global bigger. We got to invest in them. So I talked about economic diversification there. Agribusiness, tourism, the digital economy. We will expand trade. We have to expand trade. We must trade with the rest of the world. Today we have a huge deficit. We import more than we export. So we have to look very closely at how we support our local companies to export more. Because that gives us foreign exchange. It makes us less dependent on minerals alone. But you know, we need to know how much we're getting from the minerals. We need to know. We will publish for you revenues so you know how much we make let me go back to governance i forgot one thing we will publish regularly when we give money to ministries or to contractors we will publish their names we will tell you which projects we gave them money for so you can also check whether they deliver the projects because the habit for the last 10 years is 
You give the contractor the money, he takes off, he gives to the party, he gives to the guy who gave him the contract, and he doesn't build the structure. It is part of economic management, but it's also part of governance. So you want to know, who did we give the money to build the school? What kind of school? Who did we give the money for the water well? Where was he supposed to do it? So you will also be the economic police. So I talked about diversification. I talked about trade as well. And I talked about the creative industries. Of course, of course, we need cost effective. And I emphasize, cost of effective value for money, energy and infrastructure projects. I emphasize cost effective value for money. You know what has been happening the last 10 years? We are told that we have a lot of roads. Yes, roadway all side. But the roadway for B1 million, they make a 4 million. The roadway for B5 million, they make a 19 million. Who does the balance? Those of you who are economic students here, you know sometimes when you have a fixed budget, we call it a zero sum game zero-sum game those of you in the social sciences we talk about trade-off when you do this something else has to go we also in economics talk about opportunity cost when the road for be half million per kilometer you make a four million per kilometer that pass money for use for build school and toilets but somebody chopper so i emphasize value for money the accounting students will tell you what that means. It's not just to have roads. You can build roads and steal the money. You can build substandard roads. When you leave, we see the potholes after five years. Because why? The contracts were not granted properly. It was not meant for the road. It was meant for the chopping. We call it leakages in economics. People create projects, so there will be leakages. So there will be leakages. So the objective, I know people in Freetown, I know people in Freetown who claim that they are building roads in Kailang. One, they not get civil engineering degree, but they are building roads. So the last category, so the last one, about the future, last category, social justice and human security. And that's where I will end. Your university, a premier Catholic university, I am sure, apart from sustainable development, the science and other disciplines they've taught you, I am sure that they've also taught you about social justice, human rights, ethics, what is right and what is wrong. If you don't have your rights protected, you're a slave. If you don't have freedom, freedom to think, freedom to achieve your potential, you're still a slave. And here in this country, people want to make us victims of mental slavery. We should not think anymore. We should accept everything they do, and they make propaganda. Even when the road is not as good as they claim, we have to dance behind them. When they create false companies, and take our minerals, we have to celebrate. And they say, Tolungo. <laughs> no. Justice. One of the areas we will invest, we will invest heavily in reforming the judiciary. We need your rights protected. We need you to sleep at night, knowing that if somebody wrongs you, there will be justice. This society needs justice. Since I came to this country, you know, Ambassador Dabo, we've been to the courts many times. We, were, we did it to show that at the end of the day, the rule of law must prevail. The rule of law must prevail, but it has to be preserved. We will invest in a judicial reform. We're talking to a lot of judges and lawyers now what it should be like. We will invest in our security services, the police and the army. These are honorable men and women who want to protect us. We need protection but they should serve the people of Sierra Leone. We will make them professionals. We'll invest in their service and make them even better professionals, the police and the military, because they have families too. They want to sleep at night. They want a country that is growing. And so finally, I've said a lot. I gave you several ideas 
on the three themes, and I summarize. Governance and social sector investment, economic diversification and growth, several ideas, and then finally, I talked about social justice and social mobility as well. Well, this is what the NGC is looking at now. We're putting our manifesto together. We're going around it. We're looking at the citizens' manifesto to take some of the ideas for clean water, better health care, lowering uh, uh, um, 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 maternal mortality and infant mortality. All of that you will see under these big things. Healthcare, I just gave you a quick start, but we'll be doing a roadshow with our manifesto. Now, I told you to build your own country. This is our idea. I thank you.